Is Kirby Smart, Paul Feinbaum, the new Nick Saban? Kirby Smart is the king of college football. And Nick Saban is still around. He's the elder statesman. Kirby relies on him for important issues. But Nick Saban no longer runs college football. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Unbiased Room. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about the top five coaches in college football right now. So, AB, what do you got? I mean, it's a no-brainer, right? Um, Saban is number one. Right. And he's going to remain there for a long, long time to come. And we could talk about why he's number one, but it, everybody knows Saban is the GOAT, best coach in college football. Yeah, I agree. Going into this season, I was kind of up and down. I didn't know whether to go with Kirby or Nick, uh, but I give Nick, uh, of course, the number one slot because of the consistency, right? Uh, just to be able to do what he's done uh, for the last 15 years. You know, it's just it's it's, un, it's undeniable, right? So that's why I went with Saban one. Yeah, I think uh, across the board, if you don't have Saban at one, I mean, I can you know maybe the hottest coaches, but I think overall consistent, great coaching, Saban got to be up there. And then uh, coming in number two, who do y'all got? I have Kirby. Kirby at two, and again, you know, back to back, right? And the last team to do that was Saban uh, back in uh, eleven and twelve. Uh, so, and he's had two dominant teams while doing it. And I think the sky's the limit for him. I, I think they're going to continue to get better and they're going to be, you know, they're going to be in the hunt for a long time. Yeah, I agree. And the crazy thing is, I mean, his team has a very good shot at achieving a three peak, right? And that's something that's, you know, that hasn't been done since the forties that they had alluded to in one of our past videos. Um, the Bulldogs haven't finished lower than seventh since 2018. The number one recruiting yeah. class twice. So, yeah, I, I think Kirby has that thing coming, and I, I don't see him falling off. I think definitely um, a lot of people, you know, they, I mean, you could argue with him being at two or three, but I think the streak that he's on right now is what has been at number two for me. Like, as you mentioned, man, the, the great recruiting classes and the performance in the national championship, they were ready. And that's coaching. He was like, oh, it's the players on the field. But coaching, has, you know, getting your players in the right mindset. And they've been ready for almost every challenge. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all my number three is uh, Dabo Sweeney. Okay. And for me, Dabo, he's been consistently winning since he got there, right? He had one losing season, which was the 2009 season, I think. Uh, he went six and seven. But prior to Dabo's arrival at Clemson, I mean, Clemsoning was like a national thing, right? Like, oh, Clemson doing Clemson, right? Not winning the big games, just being. He's changed the culture, and he's 161 and 39, two national titles, eight ACC championships, and 10 Atlantic uh, Coastal Division titles. So, and preflow of players that have gone to the league coming out of Clemson. Yeah, that, that was my number three as well. It was Dabo. I mean, he has two titles. Um, and again, the consistency, you know, it's still, his teams are still a formidable foe for any team that they face. Right. And like I said, he got the talent. Uh, I think he has a great quarterback this time, a five-star, uh, K club, Right. So I think that his consistency keeps him at number three, but <clears throat> if they were to have a losing season, I can see him starting to drop down. So yeah, he was also my number three, um, and I think you know it could have been debatable, but I think his body of work speaks for itself, right? He's had seventy-one players drafted to the NFL, so I mean that that's a testament to you know what he's doing over there. You go the last two. <laughs> Who you got for number four, man? I had Ryan Day in the spot, and I also had Lincoln Riley in the spot, right? So that's that's like my four and five, or four A and and four B. Um, but I'm going to go with Ryan Day. Um, so, yeah, I had the 4A, 4B for Ryan Day and Lincoln Riley, right? And I want Ryan Day, his his record winning, right? He's played tougher teams than Lincoln Riley. Um, he inherited a good team, obviously, right? But he has put more players in the league than Riley, um, made the playoffs more time than Riley. So I think Ryan Day – if he can get his defense on the same level as his offense, I think, I mean, 
you know, he'll be a game changer. Yeah. You know, crazy stat about Lincoln Riley. He hasn't lost more than two games since being a head coach. So it's, you know, I don't, you know, I think Ryan Day is better than Lincoln Riley. The competition, the level of competition that Ryan Day has faced. And then, you know, I think overall Ryan Day is what, 45 and six or something like that. Let's see. He's 45. Yeah. 45 and six, two and three in bowl games. So, so I disagree. You disagree. I have, <laughs> you have disagreed yeah. as well. Okay. I have Jim Harbaugh at four. And the reason I have Jim Harbaugh at four, but anyway, he has five, five, 10 win seasons in the last eight years, uh, back to back big 10 titles. And, and the reason I say that big 10 titles is because normally the big 10 has been dominated by Ohio state. And, you know, I just look at the success that he had, you know, he was at the, precipice of being fired and to come back and, you know, lead them to two playoffs, right? That I just put him over uh, Ryan Day. And, and I think he has his program. I mean, I expect him to be in the title hunt again this year. And I'm, I got That's where I got at number four. I was agreeing with AB that um, Ryan Day is better than Lincoln Riley, but at number four, I think it's a little high for him for it being his first head coaching job, I mean, you walked in to Ohio State and it was on it was on a pillow ready. It was a present ready for you, right? Don't don't write the car. So that's why you know Jim Harbaugh, and not only his college resume but his NFL resume too. He was forty nine and twenty two in the league, and he's one hundred thirty two and fifty two in college. So. Um, He's knocking on the door of a title, man. It's two years in a row that they, they've been there. That's what I'm and and I'll, I'll go back. He was talking about 132 and 52. But like I said, he had great seasons at San Diego and at Stanford, right? And successful in the NFL. So, you know, that that's the reason I, I um, give it to him. And, you know, it's like uh, his first season at Michigan, he was 10 and 3. And he he didn't walk on third base like Ryan Day did. You know that's what he was saying. He started out on third base. Yeah. So yeah, I got to give it to Jim Harbaugh number four. To go on that, I looked it up. When he did a turnaround on the program in Stanford. So that's and if Ryan Day were to walk into Ohio State and it was a dumpster fire, he turned it around, making a powerhouse. We could be looking at a different conversations, but I agree there. Number five, <laughs> bringing in the last one. For me, number five, I had uh, Lincoln Riley. So even though he hasn't had success in the playoffs, but his what he has done at Oklahoma and now USC, because I think USC will be there this year. Um, I just think it's phenomenal. You know, the, the caliber of quarterbacks he's had, Heisman Trophy winners he's had, taking Jalen Hurts, right, uh, from basically a running quarterback to, you know, making him a, a, a passing quarterback, getting him drafted in the second round. Um, you know, look at Caleb Williams right now. I mean, he's just a phenomenal coach, and I think he is that fifth best coach in college football. I mean, I agree. I told you that was my 4B. Um he just has to be able to win at the playoffs. And, you know, like you said, I think USC will be there too. I mean, yeah, he has to win a big game. But other than that, what he's done is, yeah, nothing short of amazing in the regular season. So I went completely the opposite direction, y'all. Man. Like I looked at – so I did, you know, consider – so like my number six is Ryan Day, right? And then for me after that would be Lincoln Riley. But we talked about the best college football. And just a quick little – Blurred, man. So right now, the only coaches with championship experience is Nick Saban, Dabo, Jimbo, Mac Brown. So I got Mac Brown as my number five. Now, 274 and 144, a long career of success, right? Um, but he's winning at North Carolina, which North Carolina has had like – Plug and play good seasons, right? Like, if you pick the last 10 years, they've had a couple successful seasons. He has a national title, a couple Big 12 titles, six uh, Big 12 South titles, and then he has an ACC Coastal. So I think the overall body of work 
you know, he's been in a, a coach for a while. That's who I got. If he had, a, if he was at a bigger school or a different program, they could be on, you know, it could be on a different trend. Like he was at a SEC school winning. We'll be talking to him as one of, hey man, this this guy can coach. You know, but when I think of five best coaches, like I said, I know he is one that has won a college football playoff, but I mean college championship. I'm sorry, but um, to put him in the top five, like right now, I mean he. He was he got North Carolina. He's the only coach that's really had success at North Carolina. Both stops, right? Both times. But I don't, I don't see him as top five, though. I'd say top ten. I don't see him as top five. So, I dare say it. You know, I got I got I got love for Mac Brown, right? Because you know what he was able to accomplish at Texas. But he left Texas to dumpster fire when he left, and it was it was bad. But he was the only one to be able to win at Texas with that crazy uh, booster and all the people with the outside noise. He's the only one that was able to win at Texas with that. Now Sark is doing it. But after Mac Brown, I mean, there was Sark on his way. Uh, but we talked about longevity in college football, right? That's why I got Mac Brown. So that wraps it up for this episode. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Y'all take it easy. Peace.